Hello, hello, and welcome to the Mom and Hustle Blueprint. I am so excited for you to be here today, taking part in this mini course with me. You are probably here because you are feeling overwhelmed with the juggle of mom life and running your home. More often than not, you may feel behind with cleaning, with laundry, grocery shopping, knowing what's for dinner, having time to yourself, and no matter what you do, you just can't seem to keep up. While motherhood always has a season and some are more difficult than others, constantly feeling like you are keeping your head above water, feeling stressed out about the constant long to-do list, and starting your day off already feeling behind is no way to spend your days at home. This mini course is here to give you some solid tips, tricks and tools to help you manage your home, give you back more time, and thrive as a mom. Throughout this entire course, I want you to remember that motherhood is too short to spend it in survival mode all the time. So just a little intro, my name is Melissa, I'm from Mom and & Hustle, and I bring systems and strategies to motherhood. I'm a YouTuber, I create digital products for moms that help them own their time and thrive at home. I am a self-proclaimed systems and strategies guru, and I love empowering moms to tell their time where to go and run their homes like a boss instead of it running them. Home and life management, it's kind of my jam, and I love to share it with other moms and women everywhere. Obviously, I'm a mom, <laughs> and these are my three beautiful kiddos, Isla, Cohen, and Nash, and we live in Ontario, Canada. I'm an entrepreneur, and I love family time, road trips, um, summertime especially is my favorite season, and celebrating all types of holidays. And this whole business of mine, it just kind of grew accidentally and started when I started sharing it on social media. My why for this entire mini course is that when I became a mom for the very first time, I didn't realize all of the extra responsibilities that came with motherhood and taking care of a home. I was doing a lot on my own because my husband worked quite a few jobs. He worked very long hours. Eventually, when I did go back to work too, after my own maternity leave, the hard work, it became so much more and there were less hours in a day really to maintain all of it. I was responsible for so many things. I was determined to figure out ways to ditch the negative narrative of motherhood that we hear about all the time. And I wanted to have flow to my days. I wanted to have time for myself and I didn't want to feel like I was already behind when I rolled out of bed in the morning to start my day. This is where systems and strategies came into play for me in a big way. I am naturally a very organized person who thrives on a good workflow and a schedule. I decided to start incorporating what I was doing in my work life to my home life and it's been exactly what I have needed to stay on top of all of the things. Is every day perfect from morning until night? That is a hard no. I'm not trying to say that all of this stuff is gonna make everything perfect. I'm not trying to downplay real life things like sickness or temper tantrums, blah days, and kids who don't want to sleep. But I will say that having a plan for your day and where you want your time and energy to go will help you thrive and run your home instead of it running you. This workshop is meant to be something that you can watch while your baby sleeps or before you go to bed. It's not meant to take hours or have any type of worksheets or homework. I know that it can be really hard to find the time. It's meant to be informative with tangible tips and strategies that you can start doing right away. And I will also share how I use these systems in my daily life and the eight systems that every mom needs. This is what you're gonna learn in this mini course. I want all moms to know how beneficial having systems can be, and I hope that all of the information you need is in here, ready for you to test out today after you're done watching this mini course. So we're just gonna start things off by what exactly is a system. So it's a method of doing something and how that something is accomplished. So think of a system as a bunch of smaller tasks put together to accomplish the big task that you have in mind. It's like a series of events leading up to the final result that we are going for. When we think about it, really, our whole day is made up of systems. So here are the three reasons, in my opinion, why systems work. 
So number one, they allow you to plan and prep ahead, which I think are two of the most important things you can do as a mom is plan ahead and prep ahead. Number two, they keep you on top of things because systems keep you consistent and efficient. Number three, they become well-oiled staples in your everyday life and they ultimately give you back time. Now, here are also the five steps that are needed to create any type of system. So you can do this for anything. If there's a system that you want to create that may not be mentioned in this mini course, here are the steps you could take to create your own. So number one, you need to first figure out exactly what it is you want to have a system for. Take some time to think about an area in your home or life that you would like to systemize and ultimately make more efficient. Number two, whatever area you decide on, figure out what's currently working and what is not working. Analyze your current system if there is one and see what's kind of flowing and what really isn't. Number three, jot down and plan out your potential new process by how you want to feel and what you want the final result to be. Think of the end result and work backwards with the steps involved. Number four, you are going to then test out your plan. Think of it as a dry run of your new system. And then number five, you're going to always be improving and tweaking your system as needed or when it's not working for you. This is the most important thing. Systems are meant to be changed. The more you use it, the more you will see what's working and what's not. And when it does work, it's magic. So we're going to get right in to the eight systems and system number one that all moms need is a laundry system. So one of the most common problems I hear from moms is the fact that they just can't keep up with the laundry. They never get caught up. Every area in their home is covered with dirty clothes. They live out of laundry baskets essentially. And ultimately they really don't know what's clean or what's dirty anymore. And they just loathe doing the laundry. I don't know if that's you. Maybe it is, but this system might be the perfect one for you to try. I'm going to give you some examples. So a lot of times doing our laundry can look like this. We get out our laundry. We take it downstairs. We put it in the washing machine. Maybe a day goes by and we forget about it. And then it gets musty and gross. And we have to redo it again. And then finally we get it into the dryer and then we forget about it overnight again. When we do remember, it's 10 o'clock at night and we're like, no chance am I doing this laundry tonight. So then it stays in there and maybe it's not quite dry yet. And then you gotta refluff it again in the morning. And then by the time you actually get it upstairs, there's two or three more piles to do. Like, does that sound familiar at all? Because that's what I used to deal with all the time. There are definitely some times that I still do because this is real life, things happen, but consistently it was always like this and I hated it. So that's why laundry was kind of the first system I ever really created. So we want our laundry system to look like this and it is possible. We want to have our laundry. We want to take it downstairs, put it in the washing machine, then put it in the dryer, put it away the next, that same day. It can happen. And then we start the process all over again. So this is ideally what we'd like our laundry system to look like. So some examples of a laundry system, you could have a daily laundry system. You could have a weekend laundry. Uh, you could do assigned family days of laundry, assorted daily laundry. The point is, is that whatever you decide to do, you need to stick to it. So here is what our laundry routine currently looks like. It's evolved and changed to keep up with our family's changes. For a very long time, I always did a load a day. It's what helped me keep up on the, you know, the dirty and the stained baby sleepers and kids just learning to use a spoon to eat and all of those types of things. I did it this way because if I didn't, I would literally never get caught up and I was constantly throwing out stained clothing that I forgot about and honestly not even the best Oxy Boost could get it out. So now our laundry routine looks like this. I do a load of laundry every Tuesday and Thursday which will be from my husband and my hamper. We kind of, we share one. And then my son Cohen's hamper too, because he's on the same floor as us. So all of our laundry goes into that same hamper. And then my two older kiddos, Isla and Nash's hampers are on Wednesday and Saturdays. And then I do towels and sheets on Sunday. 
Everybody has their own hamper and clothing is washed according to the kid or the room that they are in. So this way, I'm not sorting through a pile of clothes. They are already sorted, which is key. And I just have to take the clean clothes into that particular room to put away. It makes a world of difference when you sort beforehand. So the benefits to sorting, the kids can be taught where their own dirty clothes go. The piles of clothes, they're a lot more manageable because you're not sifting through like 25 pounds of clothes. The kids are able to help out and put their clothes away too. And I'm gonna give you a little tip with laundry is that when putting it away, always start pulling out and folding the biggest items first. Like if you have big towels and then little tea towels, start with the big towels first. It just makes things a lot easier. You need to find a laundry system that works for you and you need to implement it. Let your family know how they are involved and stick to it. If it's something really out of your comfort zone, commit to trying it for at least a week and tweak how you need to. Again, that's the most important thing. You could take my systems for sure, but if you don't find that they're working exactly for your family in the current season that you're in, then make some tweaks. System number two that every mom needs is a home and cleaning schedule. The inside of your home is your family's space. It's where your kids feel safe. It's where you celebrate. It's where the chaos happens. It's where a good cry happens. It's where your family's memories are made, where you entertain, and ultimately where you want your kids to come back and visit after they leave the nest. For me, it's important that my home is kept tidied and running as smoothly as possible. Now I get it. Our homes, they'll get messy every day. It's what happens when we have a family and kids and toys and crafts. But the big difference between messy homes is how quickly you are able to get things back in order. If you feel like you are spending all day, every day cleaning up, or you feel like your entire Saturday is spent cleaning while your kids are begging you to play, then a home and cleaning schedule, it might be exactly what you need right now. My home and cleaning schedule allows me to focus on one cleaning or home related task daily. I have space set aside for it in the morning and I get it done. The benefits to having a home and cleaning schedule, it's a lot easier to focus on one daily task. You can easily tweak it to fit your schedule if something comes up. If you happen to miss a cleaning task for that particular day, and can't get to it until the next week, chances are the cleanup won't be too bad because you have been consistently keeping up with it prior. Because you go by a schedule, you can't get your family involved. They kind of know what's coming next. And your weekends aren't always spent playing catch up from the week before. So how can you create your own home and cleaning schedule? You can write out all of your cleaning tasks you do, like cleaning bathrooms, cleaning windows, mirrors, vacuuming, laundry, etc. And then you write down all of your home tasks. So this is things like ordering your groceries, doing your meal plan, decluttering days, errands, grocery pickup, things like that. And then you're going to print out a home and cleaning template that I'm going to give you with this mini course. And you're going to start filling in the days of the week with what tasks you think would work best on what days. Here you need to think about how busy you are on certain days and things like that. Also fill in your daily tasks that are non-negotiable for you. So things like sweeping and making the beds and then fill out tasks for every month as well, like cleaning baseboards, fans, monthly declutter, things like that. This is just an example of what mine looks like. You can see on the top, it's got cleaning tasks and then home tasks, things that are something that I have to do every day. I love having the beds made every day. That may not be something you're into, but I, I really feel like that's a clean slate for our family. If nothing gets done that day when the beds are made, it's just perfect. And then things that I like to do on a monthly basis is also on there as well. So this again comes with the mini course and you can print it out and make up your own and put it on your fridge. And then we're going to get right into system number three that every mom needs is a Sunday and weekend prep system. So the start of a great week ahead is dependent on preparing beforehand. You will always hear me talk about how important it is to plan and prep ahead. See, there's that, those words again, plan and prep. If you don't, you are forever living in a reactive state instead of being proactive. Doing a few key things leads up to a new week ahead 
and it will make sure that you have a positive space and have what you need to start the week off on the right foot. Setting time aside on the weekend to prepare for the week ahead is one of the best steps you can take to create a week of flow, ease, and that feeling of less overwhelm. Also note that you can choose the day or time that works best for you and your family. So maybe weekends you're always gone. Maybe you decide to do it Monday. Maybe you decide to do it Friday. Again, this needs to be catered to you. That's why half the reason the things that, that we do may not work because we are doing exactly what someone else is doing. But if you kind of know the basis for things, then it's easier to create them with what's going to work for you and your family. So a weekend prep or a Sunday prep, whatever you want to call it, can consist of meal planning and or prepping food, grocery shopping, cleaning, a clothing plan, calendar prep for a new week, a budget check-in, and a family check-in or a meeting. So for meal planning or prepping, you can plan out your dinners for the week, prep some main dinner components, you could cut up veggies for school lunches and snacks, or you could even make ahead entire meals. For grocery shopping, you can order everything online and do grocery pickup at your local store. You could use a delivery service. You could prep food before you put it away. For cleaning, you can tackle your space as a family, do any cleaning tasks you may have not had time to do during the week before. You could vacuum and sweep, clear all of your surfaces. In my opinion, there's just nothing better than starting your week off with a clean slate. A clothing plan can consist of planning out your kids' clothes for the entire week, planning out your own outfits for the week ahead, taking out outfits for everyone nightly before you go to bed. You can also do that too. I've done both. Again, both work at different seasons in your life. And then calendar prep for a new week can be looking ahead to your family calendar to see what's coming up, planning out your own week by writing all of your non-negotiables in your planner or calendar, which is what I always do. So things like appointments and work hours, things that don't change would be considered non-negotiables and they would go in your planner. Writing out all of your goals for the week ahead and then creating daily tasks to accomplish these goals. And then writing out your home and life tasks and assigning them to the days of the week. A weekly budget check-in can consist of what upcoming bills are on the docket, what money is incoming this week, what has spending been like? If you're really trying to stick to a budget, going over it weekly can be really, really helpful. And a grocery spending check-in as well, too. And then a family check-in or meeting can consist of, it can be as elaborate as sitting down at the table before or after dinner, where you discuss the week ahead and see what everyone needs from each other. Or it could be a quick check-in with your spouse or partner about work schedules, extracurriculars, etc. Like, does anyone need to pick up extra slack that week? Uh, pick up a kid from practice? Is anyone working a different shift? Those are all things that are really beneficial if you discuss them the week before because then there's no surprises. So how can you do your own weekend prep? You can write out what would help you knowing that it was done when starting a new week. You can delegate tasks and get your family involved. You can pick a time that works best and spend some time getting it all done. Your new week, it will thank you. System number four that every mom needs is a time blocking system. One thing I hear a lot from moms is that it's really hard to have any type of schedule. Planning out your day is next to impossible and having any type of routine is non-existent because you're at the beck and call of kids and a busy life. I will be the first to admit that sitting down and creating an hour by hour schedule is pretty much impossible, but I have found a way to have a schedule that also offers the perfect amount of wiggle room and flow that I need. So enter time blocking. This is just a very quick example of what time blocking looks like. Essentially, you are laying out your day in blocks of time that for the most part contain the same type of tasks or common goal. These blocks of time are usually anywhere between two and five hours in length. My personal sweet spot is between two and four hour time frames. So this is what mine currently looks like. 
Um, I have four, sorry, five blocks of time. And my first block starts in the morning. It's my get ready block from 6.30 to 9. I wake up, I have some time to myself, get ready, breakfast, pack up for school, get up to the bus. Then I have a home block from 9 till noon where I do whatever cleaning task is for that day. I prep for dinner, errands. I have some uninterrupted time with my littlest. And then I have a work block, um, which sometimes does or doesn't happen. My little guy doesn't nap anymore. So that one kind of moves around a little bit. And then I have an after school time block from 3.30 to 5, which is snack, put away things from school, homework, chill, that type of stuff. And then our evening block is from 5 to 10, where we have dinner and baths, get ready for bed. We do a quick little nightly reset and tidy, chill with my husband, whatever it is, and then sleep. So that is what my time blocking schedule currently looks like. You can go really in depth with these and add things like brush teeth and brush hair instead of something like just get ready. It's completely up to you. But the first step to creating your own time blocking schedule is to start keeping track of your own natural routines and flows throughout the day. This will make it a lot easier to create your own time blocking schedule because you're using your natural home rhythm. Then you can write down how many blocks you think fit well with you and your current. See again, I'm highlighting current because these things will change. They have to change because your seasons are always changing. With your current lifestyle and start filling them in with the tasks you usually do during those times and the tasks you would like to start accomplishing. The beauty of time blocking is that it's completely customizable, allows you to be in control, but offers tons of wiggle room for you and your ever-changing needs and is totally forgivable when you want to already call it a day and it's not even 10 a.m. So I'm just going to give you another example here. This is something if you are working outside of the home, your time blocking schedule might look different. And here's just an example. Your get ready could be kind of the same. And then you would have a work block from nine till noon. And then you could have a lunch block, block sorry, from noon to one which is where you would have lunch and then you could do errands or home management. I always used to do this when I worked outside of the home. My hour long lunch break, I would eat. And then if there was anything I had to go get, I would go get, or I would pay bills. I would do my schedule for that week. That hour at lunch was a really, really helpful thing for me. And then we had our afternoon block of time and then evening, the same type of thing. So that's just an example of how it could work if you were working outside of the home or maybe you work from home, you could kind of do something similar. So it can definitely work for all types of work outside, work inside, whatever your situation is. System number five that every mom needs is a calendar and automation system. So this particular system is all about what we can automate to make our lives easier and how we can create a perpetual calendar so that we are always on top of the reoccurring things that happen in our lives. Automating in a nutshell is something that has been set up to run automatically, like setting up your bills every month for automatic withdrawals. I, however, I also like to think of automating as looking at my calendar as a bigger picture and knowing exactly what's expected of me day after day, month after month, year after year. For example, every August, I have a notification pop up and a reoccurring note in my calendar to remind my husband or myself to call the propane company about locking in rates for the winter. So it's not essentially a task that aut that's automatically done, but it is automatically set up as a reoccurring task so that I don't forget about it. So what can you schedule in to do every week so it becomes part of your natural routine? You could schedule in budget check-ins, your weekend prep, meal planning, a coffee date with a friend, an outing with the kids, movie night, online grocery pickup, all those things like that. What can you automate to make your life more streamlined? You could automate your bill payments. You could automate meal planning and grocery lists. So this means having like a set meal plan every week so that your grocery list never changes. You could automate a yearly calendar. So what I mentioned before, what has to be done during certain months, things like that. And you could also automate cleaning tasks. So again, the cleaning schedule, you know every day what's expected of you. So these are things that I currently automate. I automate our bill payments, our meal planning and our, and our grocery lists. 
I automate our yearly calendar, my cleaning tasks, and my monthly decluttering. These are all things that are just automated. I know they're coming up and I do them like clockwork every month, week, whatever it is. So I'm just gonna give you examples of how my calendar automation looks like, just so you could maybe brainstorm how it could work for you. So starting in January, we always book summer holidays and summer camps. February, get things ready for taxes. Uh, March, we go through closets and get things ready for spring. April, we spring clean and finalize our summer plans. In May, we do a seasonal purge and an oil change. In June, I always do like a six months until Christmas pre-planning. In July, we book winter holidays if we're going anywhere and some pre-trip planning. August is to call propane to lock in those winter rates. September, we go through all of our outdoor clothing and see what's needed for the upcoming winter months. October, we book Christmas photo shoot for our Christmas cards and call Bell about new promotions. In November, we order Christmas cards and do a big toy purge. And then December, we send out our Christmas cards. So these are all things that I have in my calendar reoccurring every month. So a little bonus tip that I'm going to share with you about scheduling and automations. It's something called a mom flow. And it's something that I use for so many things in our busy life. But most importantly, I use them for big life events. So things like kids' birthdays, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, family vacations, things like that. Think of a mom flow like a workflow where planning and prepping tasks are laid out six weeks or more before an event. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an example here of exactly what I'm talking about when I say my mom flows. So let's say it's your kid's first birthday party. So I would sit down and I would write out six weeks prior. Think of a theme and jot down food ideas. Five weeks prior, make guest list and create invites. Four weeks prior, send out invites. Three weeks prior, pick up or order birthday gifts. Two weeks prior, get decorations and finalize food menu. One week prior, confirm who is coming and wrap gifts. Two days prior, order and pick up groceries and prep food ahead of time. And then the day of, put decorations up and get ready for the party. So again, it's just something really simple and it keeps you accountable, lets you have a few tasks here and there leading up to it so it's not completely overwhelming. System number six that every mom needs is a meal planning system. I will be very frank with you all. I hate being in the kitchen. Cooking and following recipes to create a meal is not my forte at all, nor do I enjoy it. That's the big thing. I do not enjoy it. <laughs> I have had to learn to somewhat enjoy it and make meals for my family because I am the person home at that time to make dinner. When I first started experimenting in the kitchen, I knew that I wanted the process to be simple, convenient, and automated. Those were my three main things. I wanted simple meals that didn't require a ton of ingredients and were easy to make. Think of things like sheet pan meals, one pot meals, crock pot dinners, and frozen meals. Those are all of my jam. I also wanted convenient meals, so dinners that could incorporate like a ready-made sauce, frozen veggies that cooked in the microwave, and a protein that was easy to make. And then I wanted to automate the whole process and rotate meals every one or two weeks. So how can you create your own meal plan? Write out a list of meals you and your family like to eat. You can also incorporate theme night meals into this list. So think of things like crock pot night or try something new night, Italian night, clean out the fridge night, those types of things. And then pick anywhere from 10 to 15 so you have enough to rotate through for two weeks. Or you could do seven to 10 and do one week. It's whatever you would like to do. Next, you're gonna grab a sheet of paper and jot down the days of the week for two weeks or one week and note the days of the week that making a meal isn't required. So think of dance classes or soccer practices or takeout nights and write them all in on those days. When you do this, a lot of the time you end up having to make less meals than you think or realize that on dance nights you can get away with snack boxes on the go 
or picking up Happy Meals from McDonald's, whatever you would like to do. Then fill in the remaining blanks with your meals. Take note of days that you may be more tired than others, or maybe Mondays you always feel ready to cook a feast, so maybe that day is best for a try something new night. If two weeks seems like too much, like I mentioned before, start with one week and rotate through that. Currently we do one week, we have done two weeks, but one week is where we're at right now. Definitely don't reinvent the wheel if you don't want to or you don't need to. You can also plan for lunches, after school snacks, and keep things easy with two breakfast choices throughout the week and leave the break breakfasts for the weekend. When you have a one to two week rotation that you're good with after testing it out, then you can create the matching grocery list. Because you rotate weeks or use the same meal plan week after week, your grocery list will also remain the same and ensure a quick grocery run every week, which is what I do. I love it. People may think it's really boring, but you know what? It works for us. It's less overwhelming. It allows us to stick to our budget and we just all around love it. System number seven. This is more of like all of my little systems, but they're all my time management tips and mom hacks. Time is of the essence when you are a mom. At any given moment, we are juggling 100 things and trying to remain somewhat calm. You have to use your time wisely as a mom and know where it's going. Of course, your downtime and self-care is important and very needed, but you can't expect to accomplish things if you don't have a plan of attack and realize that things will indeed slip through the cracks if you are spending five hours a day scrolling your feed or walking around in circles, not knowing what to do. So these are some of my just best used things that I do throughout the day to keep on top of everything. So set a timer to get things done. Race against the clock. I love doing this. I'll set a timer for 10 minutes and I'll just go to town and see what I can get done in 10 minutes. This is also really good to do with the kids. If you are reheating your dinner in the microwave, use that timer to tidy something up around you. How many times do we put things in for 45 seconds and then just stand there and wait for it? I will do something and it's amazing what you can accomplish with 45 seconds. Put things in the dishwasher. Put the milk and butter away. Whatever it is, use your time wisely. Clean as you cook in the kitchen. I know this is probably harder for some people. My husband is horrible at cleaning as he goes in the kitchen, but I like to put things away as much as possible. If I'm done with the olive oil or the salt and pepper, putting things back when I'm done with it is also a very smart thing to do when you're cooking in the kitchen. For me anyways, it just leaves less of a mess to clean up. Never leave a room empty handed. If you are walking out of your bedroom and there's something there that's meant to go in the bathroom and you're walking right by the bathroom, grab it and put it in the bathroom. Another tip, put down your phone. I know we are all like, it's just, it's crazy to think of how much time we spend on our phones, but really if there's things you're not accomplishing, chances are you could accomplish it with spending less time on your phone. It's something that's been really beneficial to me too. Establish check-in times. This is something that I do. I have three check-in times throughout the day. I have one in the morning and the afternoon and at night, and they just kind of keep me on track. Once I get to that specific check-in time, there's certain things in my mind that I like to have done. And if they're not done, then whatever, but it just kind of keeps me on a good schedule throughout the day. Incorporate daily resets. This is something I like to do after every meal. I like to have the kitchen tidied up. It just makes me feel so much better instead of leaving everything until the evening because I know how I feel at the end of the evening or at the end of a very busy day. I don't want to do anything else. And when I look around and I see a very messy kitchen and living room, it's just not something I want to deal with at that time. My mindset just isn't there. So if I do these little kind of resets throughout the day, it just leaves the evening a whole lot less overwhelming and stressful for me with a lot less to do. Ditch the long to-do list and choose three tasks or top priorities for the day. These could be anything you want, but don't start off your day with a long, never-ending to-do list. Just pick three things that you'd really like to get done and tell your time where to go, try something like time blocking is also an awesome 
time management tip for you. Another great mom hack is if you see something that doesn't belong, pick it up. I'm always trying to teach my kids this. Like if you're walking by something that's on the floor and it should go somewhere else, pick it up, put it away. If it's garbage, put it in the garbage. If it belongs in your kid's room, take it to your kid's room. It's just something really simple. Implement a catch-all bucket for the end of the night. Any type of bucket, just put it in one of your main spaces and at the end of the night, any kind of straggling things that are around your home, put it in the bucket and then it's just easier to take things from room to room. Prep some dinner items ahead of time or get pots and pans out ready to go. What I mean by this is every day before I go out to get the kids off the bus, I always go ahead and get my utensils and things out ready for dinner. So if it's past tonight, for example, I'll go ahead and I'll fill our big thing with water. I'll go ahead and get the pasta out. I will get the pasta sauce. I'll get the can opener. I will get the frying pan if I'm sauteing veggies or whatever it is. I'll go ahead and get everything out and ready to go because goodness knows at that exact moment when dinner starts, everybody needs everything. And if I have those few things ready to go, it's just a game changer with how smoothly dinner goes for me. Another awesome mom hack is to delegate tasks to members of your family or to outsource. So it could be as simple as maybe your oldest takes care of um, getting rid of the lunch bags at the end of the day from school. Maybe you're ordering your groceries online, which is amazing. I'm so glad I started doing that. Maybe you have a delivery service that even drops them off to you. Taking things off your plate that you can is an awesome time management skill for moms, if you can. But there's always things you can do that are really not going to cost you any money at all. Simplify something that really overwhelms you. So again, that's where systems come in. If laundry is really overwhelming or getting up the morning before for school and things aren't done, think of what you can be doing to make the process better for you. Give yourself times for specific tasks. Do what you can and then move on. So same thing, timing yourself for things like that. Maybe you really want to get something put away. Give yourself 10 minutes, do what you can, and then move on. And tidy as you go. That's one of my main time management tips is to not leave everything to the last minute. Again, going back to the mindset thing. Think of how you feel at the end of the day. If you're just leaving everything to pile up, chances are you're going to be bitter. You're going to be tired. Things might not get done and then you're leaving it to the next day and the next day and the next day. Tidying as you go is one of the simplest things you, you can do. It may seem kind of counterintuitive when you're tidying something up just for it to get messy again, but really it does help, especially with that mindset at the end of a very busy day. Another mom hack is to pair a mundane task with a mundane task. What I mean by this is that if you are really wanting to listen to a new audiobook, but you feel like you don't have the time, maybe pair it while you are having a shower or whether you, when you are cleaning something, things like that. I will always clean the shower while I'm having a shower. I will wash the sink while I'm brushing my teeth, just little things like that. Stick to a schedule for the things that are constantly causing you overwhelm. So again, things like laundry, cleaning, sticking to a schedule is really beneficial. Another mom hack is to try a brain dump. This is something I talk about all the time. Anytime I'm feeling the least bit overwhelmed or I feel like I have a lot of things on my plate, I sit down with a piece of paper and I just write everything down. Whether it's neat or tidy or actually gets used or put to a calendar, just writing it down is such a great way to just kind of declutter your mind and see what really is important and what isn't. Another awesome mom hack is that everything should have its place. Everything in our, in our home has a place. If things don't have places, chances are it's just too much stuff for us and it gets sent out the door. Learn to use my counting your minutes method. So a little backstory about this is when I was, again, a first time mom and there was just all of these things and I felt like I was just always going into a messy room or I always had to do this. I always had to do that. I was the only person that ever did this and oh my goodness, Cheerios on the floor again and I just cleaned it up. 
I started counting my minutes and it's been a huge, huge game changer for me and my mindset. I've been doing it since my oldest was little. So that's like eight years now. And it's something I talk about all the time, but essentially what it is, is you think of the time that it takes to do something instead of the dreaded task itself. So for example, if you hate emptying your dishwasher, the next time you go to do it, time how long it actually takes you to do it. And you're gonna be surprised that it maybe took you four or five minutes to actually do it. So then the next time you have to empty your dishwasher and you're dreading it, think of the limited time it takes to actually do it instead of the task. So this works for anything. It can work for making your bed or cleaning the playroom. You could time your tasks all day long and realize that all of this stuff you were stressing out about maybe took you a half hour in total. And when you minus that from the amount of hours in a day that you're actually up and out and about, you realize, gee, you know, I was stressing out over nothing. So it's really something that's been super helpful for me. And again, something I do every day. Now when I have to sweep 15 times a day instead of, oh my gosh, I got to sweep again. It's like, okay, this will take, you know, 30 seconds and I'll be done. So it's just a great mindset shift. We're into our very last system and it's system number eight and it's all about morning and nighttime routines. If I could recommend any one of these systems that would be the most beneficial for you to start with, it would be this one. Having a solid morning and night routine is the difference between sinking or swimming and starting the day off on a positive note and ending it feeling good about what you did. Your morning routine should fuel you for the day ahead it should be something that allows you peace before the day begins and something that's just for you. Whether you wake up five minutes before your kids or an hour, starting your day on your own terms instead of to kids demanding things or crying will make you feel like you can take on the day. My morning routine is super simple. I get up at 6.25 a.m. It's usually before the kids, like 99% of the time. It's, you know, a half hour, an hour before the kids get up. I make my coffee, then I curl up on the couch and I catch up on a show until 7 a.m. and then I get ready. I'm always ready to go by 7.15 and then after I get the kids on the bus for nine is, is when I will check in with my planner. I'll read my daily devotion. It's all really, really simple, but it fills my cup up for me and me alone. And that can be the big problem with routines and why they don't stick because we do what everyone else is doing. We think because it looks like every mom on Instagram is waking up to work out that we should be too. If that's your thing, great. But if you're like me and really crave the slowness of your morning, then you may hate the thought of being really active because I know I do. Which is why I either work out after the kids go to school or I do it in the evening. You have to do what makes you get out of bed every morning before your kids. And for me, that's simply a hot coffee curled up on the couch watching a show. So how can you create your own morning routine that's going to fill you up? Number one, you need to decide what you want to get out of your morning routine. Do you want to be more physically active in the mornings or are you doing it for more focused alone time like I am? You need to have a plan and an end goal. Then the motivation can come from that. Number two, preparing the night before is also essential. If you want to work out in the morning, lay out your workout clothes. You could even sleep in them if that's going to be easier for you. If you want to get up and enjoy a hot coffee and journal, prep coffee the night before and have your journal and pen out in the spot you intend to sit at. Number three, start small. If you are not normally a morning person or you are just getting somewhat used to your kids sleeping through the night, then set your alarm five minutes before you usually get up and every couple of days set the alarm for five minutes earlier. And four, in order to get up in the morning, yes, you do need to go to sleep at night. Do you wanna know something? The secret to an awesome morning routine is a solid nighttime routine. My nighttime routine is all about doing things that are going to make the morning less hectic and crazy. Whatever I can do the night before, I will do it. My nighttime routine consists of dinner and kitchen cleanup, making the kids lunches, filling up water bottles, 
pre-packing backpacks, picking out the kids' school clothes, and setting out coffee mugs and coffee pods, coffee, everything I need, and of course doing our nightly tidy. Where to start when you want to create your own nighttime routine. Think of how you want to feel at the end of the evening and how you would like to feel every morning when you wake up. Are you going to bed anxious about all the things you didn't get done that night? Are you waking up in the morning already feeling behind? It's time to think of your evenings as the foundation being laid for the next day. So what can you do the night before to start a new day? Jot down a list of tasks that you currently do in the morning that could be done the night before to make things easier on yourself. Maybe you like to leave all the school stuff to when you wake up, but you are finding that it stresses you out and it makes you late for drop off every single morning. It's time to prep the night before. Your nightly routine can and should be the perfect mix of getting your family ready for a good night's sleep and for the next day. Prepping things ahead of time for the morning rush and doing something that relaxes you for a good night's sleep ahead. Limit screen times before bedtime, write any thoughts or to-dos on a piece of paper before you turn in, and go to bed at the same time every night. Don't complicate any of these routines. Follow your natural flow and take notes over the next few days and see what is currently working and what isn't. The most important part to having routines is that they should be for us and help contribute to our best lives and motherhood. They are meant to help you, not hinder you. That's it guys. Just a quick recap on all of the eight systems. We have our laundry system, our home and cleaning schedule, our Sunday prep, time blocking, scheduling and automations, time management hacks, meal planning, and our morning and nighttime routines. My hope for you after this workshop is that you can and are willing to start incorporating some of these systems into your daily life. Or maybe something I said was a light bulb moment for you and it's that little tweak you have been waiting for. Motherhood is hard, yes, but we shouldn't feel stressed and overwhelmed every single day. It's far too short for that. Be proactive, plan your day, allow for flexibility, ask for help, and start adding some systems and strategies to your life that will help you feel in control. Again, thank you so much for being here. I know that your time is so valuable, but I really hope this was helpful for you. Please reach out. You can check me out at my website or on Instagram. You can also send me an email. I'd love to know what you thought of this course. Until next time, thank you so much and be awesome, Mama.